Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how I paint the skin tones, and I'll use this Frieda model from Gates of Nilheim as an example. Let's get right into it then. So this is the Frieda model. This is a prototype model from Gates of Nilheim, and I've primed her with a brush using the Surface Primer Panzer Grey. And once that dried, I used a white dry brush over the top. That brings out all the details. Here are the paints that we'll be using in the video. I'm going to go with a layer Cadian flesh tone. These are all Citadel colour paints. Then I'm going to take a shade of Reichland flesh shade, put that over the top. Then we're going to go back to that Cadian flesh tone and then we'll start layering up using the layer Kislev flesh. That's going to be our mid tone. And then our final highlight will be a layer Flayed One flesh. And I'll put links to all these in the description down below. I've started using this simple recipe for the skin tones on a lot of my models now, and I'm really happy with how it's come out. Before this, I've always used contrast paints, but I'm trying to improve a little bit, try something different. I thought it'd be fun to share it with you. The brush I'm using in the video is a Wargamer Regiment brush. I've been using this quite a lot regularly too, and I'm finding it's a really reliable brush. I'm using a wet palette as well. This is the Army Painter wet palette, and there's loads out there. You can even make your own. I did a video on that when I first started the channel, but you can't go wrong with this army painter one and there's a link down below. Okay, let's get started. So here we are then, we've got the layer Cadian flesh tone, got our model ready, and I've just mixed one part paint to one part water. I'm simply gonna block in the model, painting every area that's gonna be flesh tone. So there we can see the legs. I'll start there as they're the biggest areas and then we'll go around just covering all the other sections. So just give this one nice even coat all over by adding the water to this. When it dries, you just get a nice even finish and then we'll put another layer of paint over the top of it. But there you can see every area is now has had one coat of paint. You can still see some of that gray coming through and we wanna cover that up. And I like to do the dry brushing after I've primed the models because it really brings out all the details. And you're not gonna really notice it so much once you start layering up like this. But if you went over that with contrast paint, you get a really striking effect. But here we're gonna go back to that paint now, the water and the paint mix. I'm just gonna go over the model again, taking my time, nice even coat, and then that's gonna block it all in, ready for the next part, which will be the shade. And now in this video, I'm going a bit slower than I normally would. I'm just gonna take you through each step so you can see exactly how it's done for this one element. And then you can apply this to any model that has skin tones that you want the same color. Okay, that's completely dried now with two coats. So let's take the shade Reichland Flesh Shade and we're gonna give this a coat all over. This one, I'm not using the wet palette. I'm going straight out of the bottle and I'm gonna give it one even coat and I'm just gonna work it around, push in and pull in that shade to get it into all the recesses. And I'm using the texture of the model itself to get that paint off the brush and anywhere it's pooling a little bit too much, I'll just grab my brush and then just soak it back up. And if you find you've got too much paint on your brush, just dab it on some kitchen towel or a little cloth and then you can just suck that paint back up if you put too much on. And here I'm working it in. So just getting a, a balance through practice about how much paint to put on for the different areas. And we're gonna let that completely dry now and then move on to layer Cadian flesh tone again. And we're going with the same thing, the part paint to water. And now I'm gonna paint over the model, but I'm not gonna paint in the recesses. I want that flesh shade to come through. And so that's gonna give us our darkest color. So I'm just picking out the biggest areas of like muscle that we can find and then that's going to get one coat of this paint. I'm not going to do this twice, I'm just going to do it once now and then start layering up and we're going to get lighter and lighter as we go. But we're going back to this Cadian flesh tone which is the paint we originally based with because that shade darkened it quite a bit. So now we're going to freshen it up with this, that's going to leave us with all the recesses with a nice dark shade in there and then all the raised areas will get a nice coat of paint now. So I'm just using the model as my guide. I'm not like having to think where to put this. I'm just looking at the model. Any area that stands out will get a coat. And there you can see that's just one coat now and that's really freshened it up a bit. And you could almost stop there. You could, you could almost be ready to play just as it is like that. But we're gonna go a couple of steps further. And the next step is to take some layer Kislev flesh. Same thing, one part water to paint. And now I'm gonna go over all those raised areas again, but I'm not quite gonna paint as much as I did with the previous paint. 
So I'm going to pick out all the areas and just paint it in and then leaving a little bit around. And then we're going to get smaller and smaller as we go with each of these steps now. So when we do the final highlight later on, we'll do the same thing, but just go a little bit smaller again. It doesn't matter what paint I use, whenever I paint the models, I always try and move the model so that I can keep my brush and my hands in almost the same place. Sometimes I'll move my brush around at a weird angle, certainly to get into the awkward spots. But most of the time I'll try and keep myself nice and comfy and with lots of control. And then I'm not shaking too much when I'm trying to paint. I'm also trying to keep a nice point on the brush and not overload it with paint, especially when I'm getting smaller and smaller with the areas I'm painting here. So when I go back to my wet palette, I'll just twist the brush through it to try and get a nice point on it. And I'm not using a small brush here. I'm using, you know, it's quite a big brush, this one, but it's enough to get a good point and hold enough paint so it doesn't go dry, but thin enough so that we can get these nice details on the models. That's that mid-tone done now, so let's move on to the final highlight and we'll take some layer flayed one flesh. This is getting much lighter now and you can see on the right with the wet palette how things have gone from quite dark, mid-tone and then to light. And so I'm just gonna go over all those raised areas. I'm imagining where the light source is coming down, it's hitting the model and then I'm just doing almost like little dots and lines in some places, but just picking the very uppermost section of all the different parts of the body that are gonna have more light on them than anything. So I'm not gonna really go underneath in the shadow here, just the very uppermost part. And it's just a case taking your time, again, moving the model, not yourself, so you've got lots of control, spin it round, get yourself a good paint handle like this or use a bottle with some blue tack on top. That works a treat too, I'll often do that. If I'm doing a few models at once, I've got three painting handles, but if I'm doing five models, I'll use corks, I'll use bottles, little um, tubs, anything I can that I can get a nice grip around with the blue tack on top and that's gonna hold the model down. And in fact, with this particular paint handle, I have only used blue tack. I'm not using the grip of the handle because it's quite fine, this model, and the base is quite thin and sometimes it all will just pop off. So I'm using the blue tack and that's gonna hold it in place. But here you can see now I'm going right in. See how I twist the brush to get a point? I'm just gonna put a tiny dot on each of the abs and that's really gonna give them a nice highlight then. And again, focusing on those areas that will catch the most light. So again, don't go underneath the muscles, like under the arms and legs and things, just on the top like this. And where I'm doing the abs, if you imagine you draw a line through the middle of it horizontally, I'll put the dot on the uppermost section. And then just work around, catching those shoulder muscles and the bicep there, the tricep as well. And that's it, nice and simple and a nice progression from contrast paints. So if you've been painting with contrast paints like me and you wanna try something a little bit different, then have a go at this layering. I think you'll be really happy with the results. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. Once you've got some control with the brush, you're using the model to tell you where to paint and where to add those highlights and then letting the recesses create the shadow for you. That's all there is to it then, but here's how I've done some of the other models too. So here's a selection of the models from the prototype box set for Gates of Nilheim. This one came out really good. I was very happy with that and nice details. Again, it's all down to the model and the quality of the sculpt because that's gonna tell you where all the, like the jaws are and the, the cheekbones so you know where to go in and add that highlight. I really like all these models and I'll be using some of them to create some other videos for this series. So the idea is to, rather than go through each model and show you how I painted it, but instead to do a little mini series where I break down all the elements. So we'll be looking at how to paint the flesh tone, how to paint metallics, how to paint things like wings and furs. And then with this guy, I've created another video that will be up very soon. I'll show you how I painted his robes. So we'll go through a simple technique to paint robes, much like we did here with the flesh tone, where we're gonna use three or four paints. And in this case, just a couple of paints actually, and then just try and create something to the next step on from contrast paint. So we're not blending here, we're not trying to get smooth transitions. The idea is just to go to that next stage from contrast paints, add a bit more depth with some darker shades and lighter highlights. Look out for that video coming soon. And in the meantime, if you wanna see how I primed using the surface primer and a brush, check out that video, I'll link at the end of this one. Here's a lineup of some of those models that I've painted and finished, got them all based and everything. So really happy with how these turned out. And the textures on these models were just great to practice this technique with. And I've learned a lot and hopefully I can apply that to my next set of models. You can also see how I painted Bjorn the Viking all the way through. So I did every element in that one video. And I've also done an unboxing of the prototype if you want to find out more about the game. 
and a demo let's play where I do a slow guided playthrough just to give you an idea of one of the tutorial scenarios and how the game plays. And if you want to find out even more, head over to Gates of Nilheim on GameFound. It's live at the moment. It's got, what, nine days left to go as I'm making this video. It's had a fantastic start and it'd be great if we can all go there and help support it and unlock some of those new add-ons. So that'd be awesome. Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you did like it, it'd be great if you hit the like button. Leave a comment as well. Let me know what you think about this simple technique. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you here next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for helping me to keep going with these regular videos. I couldn't do this without you and I appreciate your support so much. If you'd like to join the Patreon community, support the channel, get some great perks at the same time, there's a link down below in the description. It'll be awesome to see you there.